stars Brie Larson and Samuel L. Jackson and it follows Carol Devers a former pilot turned superhero gets caught up in the middle of a galactic war between two alien races. I really like this film. The Marvel Cinematic Universe has done it again. This was very entertaining. It was very exciting. I, I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. The positives there's a slew of them. First and foremost the characters. Brie Larson as Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers. She was very cunning, she was very beautiful, and she was very serious at what she did. She's one of those characters that is trying to find out all about her past. She can't remember anything about her past. This isn't one of those typical origin stories. Yes, this is an origin movie, and it is an origin story. But it's, it's not presented in the same way Captain America was. In this film, she has her superpowers right away. And it only just shows it in flashbacks. I think that was a really good choice to do because, yes, with Captain America, it was still awesome. You get to find out who he was as a person, who he was as a human being before he got changed into this superhero. But with Captain Marvel, you actually see it in passing. And, but they present it in a way where you still get to find out a little bit of what she did. She was a pilot for the Navy or for, for the Air Force, for the Army, or whatever you want to call it. And she did what she did for the same reasons after she became a superhero, to save lives. So, in passing, the way they presented that, it was really quick, but it was really good at the same time. The way she got her superpowers reminded me a lot of how the Fantastic Four did. The one where they go into space and they get their powers that way. That's how this film reminded me of. She didn't get her superpowers in space, but she got it from a thing that she blew up. This device that she was carrying after she crashed. She just blew it up and it just whooshed all over her. And I thought that was pretty cool. Brie Larson did a terrific job in this film. And I really commend her performance. Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury definitely does get a lot of screen time in this. I think this is the one MCU film where he actually does get the most screen time. Even more than what the first Avengers... Well, no, I'll take that back. I, I would say that this film and the first Avengers, he gets about the same amount of screen time, which is a lot compared to the others. And I liked his performance. You get answered some questions about him that was never answered in the other films. Like how he lost his eyesight. Like the one eye. You get to find that out. Without spoiling it, you definitely get to find that out in this film. The chemistry between Nick Fury and Captain Marvel was just hilarious in some scenes. Especially with Nick Fury and that cat. Aren't you the cutest little thing? Aren't you cute? And what's your name, huh? Fury. What's you? I'll be back. The dialogue that Nick Fury, that Samuel L. Jackson was given for that cat, it was just hilarious. Fun fact, Brie Larson was actually allergic to cats. So in those scenes, they had to either use a puppet or digitally remove the cat and use a CGI cat. And you get a great performance from other actors, especially from Jude Law, who plays the supposedly trainee or trainer of uh, Captain Marvel, Brie Larson's character. He did a pretty good job in his part. He plays like the master commander, the boss to Captain Marvel of the Kree. As I said, the story was very gripping. It was very enjoyable. I like the direction and the writing in this. The director is Ryan Fleck and Anna Bowden also wrote this. Both of them really did a terrific job. And this is actually the second film in the MCU. It actually was directed by a pair. The first one being the Russo brothers with Captain America and Avengers. And the way they did the story in this film was really good. I really liked the way the story was presented. It, it was an origin story. It was set in the 90s. So you have that 90s era feel. You know you're watching a modern day Marvel movie, but at the same time, 
since it was set in the 90s, you get that 90s feel, and I really enjoyed that, especially with the blockbuster scene. The visual effects in this film was just stunning, especially the de-aging of Greg and Jackson's character, who played Agent Coulson and Nick Fury. This is the first film where they actually used a de-aging throughout the whole film. With the other Marvel films, they just showed in flashback scenes. This film, they actually used it in the whole film, and Lola VFX. I believe that's the visual effects company that actually did that, and they did a really fantastic job. It didn't look cheesy. It looked real. Samuel L. Jackson and Clark Gregg's character actually looked 20 to 30 years younger. That's how good the visual effects was, and I really commend the way they did that. Pinar Toprak's score was done really well. She developed the score mainly for the title character, as all movies do. But she blended it so well that she later transformed a score for the Kree and the Skrulls. And she did that in a way that really worked for this film. You know when Captain Marvel was going to show up because of the score. And you knew when the Kree or the Skrulls was going to show up because of the score. She uh, blended that in and just the right amount of ingredients. She did a really terrific job. As I said, Ben Davis's cinematography work was done really well. You get that 90s feel. You get that sense that you're watching a film that was set solely in the 90s, 1995 to be exact, because they actually confirmed that in the film. They mentioned something that happened six years earlier and mentioned what year that was, 1989. So, Naturally, it was going to be 1995, so that's when this film takes place. It was set at a time when the first Friday came out. They inspired this film from such action films of the 90s. You knew you were watching a modern-day Marvel film. It definitely had that 90s vibe. Like you were watching a 90s film, but not all the way, because they wanted to keep true to the Marvel Universe. And there was two end credit scenes. One, I'm not going to get into, but the other with the new Avengers movie coming out. I won't tell you what happened, but they just had to have ripped that straight out of that movie. And it deals with what happened at the end of Infinity War. When Avengers Endgame comes out, I'm willing to bet money that scene will be directly in that movie. It worked really well, even though I think they stole that straight from the Avengers Endgame movie. And sliding into the negatives, and there's only one, folks. I really enjoyed this movie, and there's only one negative I have. The pacing. It did get slow there for, for a little bit, and it kind of reminded me of how the TV shows made me feel. The way the Marvel TV shows present itself is more soap opera-ish, and there's like action scenes here and there. I'm not saying that this film made me feel like 100% that way. It's just that there was a period of time in this film where it kind of made me feel like, okay, you're talking a little bit too much. We get it. Can we move on? It just seemed like the pacing of this film was a little slow and it just didn't feel quite like it was trying to move on in certain parts. But when it did, all those feelings kind of went away. Guys, in the end, I think this movie was really well done. It was another well-pieced movie. And one final thing I should mention, because of Stanley's untimely death back in two, at the end of 2018, they definitely did a real good tribute. They went far beyond, in my opinion. In the opening credits, the opening Marvel credits, they actually show his face all over the Marvel symbol. Usually you'll get Captain America and Thor, the usual Marvel characters. You see his face plastered all over it. And then after it says, thank you, Stan. And they do that right off the bat, right at the beginning. And I thought that was really awesome. That was a true hats off to the man because without him, we wouldn't have any of this. So that was really cool of him to do. Captain Marvel gets an A. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Like, subscribe, get reputized, share. What did you think of Captain Marvel? For those of you who did see it, leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. Stay tuned for more videos and reviews coming soon. Peace the rip out.